Hello and welcome to the results roadmap. Today I'm going to discuss the top three reasons why people come into the gym, which is how to lose weight, burn fat, and get stronger. It could be one of the three, it could be two or all three of them. Today I'm going to discuss just the three simple things that you need to do to make this happen. So we're going to get right into it. All right, so this whole process begins with a mindset shift. If you don't begin here, you're going to ultimately set yourself up for failure. So what most people start when they get started with fitness is that it's going to be a means to an end, meaning that once they hit their goal, their plan is just to stop and to be done. When instead, we need to get started with this whole process with the mindset that this is going to be an infinite game and that exercise is going to be a part of your life. And I'm going to explain why that is so important here in the next couple of slides. All right. So when you have a means to an end mindset, these are some of the things that happen. Number one, you can overexert yourself in the gym. These are the people that come in and they get started. They're really excited and they work out four, five, six days a week and they overexert themselves, right? They're, they're boomer busts. This, uh, oftentimes leads to injury. It can lead to sickness. It can lead to burnout or all of the above. And this is just not a sustainable way to go about your exercise routine. And instead, we need to think about something that you can sustain long term. Okay, so this is very common. And this, these are some of the big issues that we see with the means to an end mindset. Now, a big problem with this is that when you have the means to an end mindset, you'll see the people who get, lose and gain weight over and over and over again. And this just does a number on your body. It is not good for you at all. It has a very negative impact on your metabolism. It can lead to losing muscle. Hormones can get screwed up. You actually become more efficient at storing fat, which is not good. Uh, this is not good for your cardiovascular health, your liver. And then there's a psychological impact of just constantly going back and forth. It's a very tough place to be both physically and mentally. So there's a lot of negative effects here of going through that yo-yo diet or the, the process of gaining and losing weight constantly. So we need to instead shift to an infinite game mindset that fitness is going to be a part of your life forever. It's something that is just going to be a constant that you'll always do. This does a number of things for us. This is ultimately the, the, the only path to true health and sustainable results, right? We wanna see the physical results in the gym, but ultimately, at the end of the day, we want to be healthy, okay? And if, if you don't think that's the case for you, just think of your mindset when you get sick. The only thing that you want when you're sick is to be healthy, right? And so exercise can really be powerful when it comes to that, right? So strength needs to become a foundational part of your life rather than a means to an end. And if you can get to that mindset, then you can move forward. All right, so there's really just three steps to getting results in the gym once you've set that mindset for yourself. You need to strength train, you need to do cardio, and you need to have your nutrition under control. That's really it. It really is that simple, but I'll explain why most people fall short, why they quit, and why they're unable to get the results that they're looking for, okay? But it really is this simple. Three things, that's all you need to do. So here are some reasons why people can't do it. They struggle. They don't get the results that they're looking for. This is what's required. Uh, the requirements are hard work. You have to be consistent. Uh, consistent meaning it's, it's again, it's it's an infinite game. It's something that you're, you're committed to. Uh, when it comes to commitment, that means you do it when you don't feel like it, right? When you get sick, when you go on vacation, most people underestimate how difficult it is to restart a habit once you've had even just a week or a few days off. So commitment means that you fight through those tough times when you don't feel like it. And then again, developing that right mindset from the beginning, the infinite, the long-term mindset when it comes to health and fitness. Now, there's a lot here. I'm not going to read all this in detail, but I believe that the foundation here is to step one is to make strength training a part of your life. Okay, so strength training is really important here. There's a list of benefits. As you can see here, obviously increasing muscle mass and strength, um, improved metabolic health, bone health, um, fat loss, joint health and mobility, increased energy levels, mental health, improved sleep quality of life and longevity, right? So there's a number of very important reasons why strength training is so absolutely important and critical to have in your life as a consistent 
foundational piece, but it also applies directly to whatever your specific goals are in terms of fat loss, weight loss, and obviously getting stronger, right? And so uh, now I'm going to get into some basics here when it comes to why we need to have muscle on our body as it results to fat loss, right? So think of muscle as a battery, a battery that is going to constantly be burning uh, calories and helping you use fat as an energy source. The more muscle you have on your body, the more energy your body is required to use throughout the day or, or the more calories that you will ultimately burn even and especially while you are sleeping, right? So that's where muscle is so important. You get a really big return off of all the hard work that you put in. Whereas if you're somebody who is just doing cardio, you're actually starting to lose muscle over time, which is slowing down your basal metabolic rate, which is how many calories you burn at rest on a daily basis, right? By adding muscle to your body, you're increasing your basal metabolic rate, which is something that can help you burn more calories every single day and again, especially even while you're sleeping. Okay, so you can see why strength training is critical in terms of building muscle. And if you have that fat loss goal, it's absolutely gonna be critical there. If you're looking to get toned, uh, strength training is extremely, extremely important for you. All right, so our, our general recommendations when it comes to strength training is that you should be doing a minimum of two to three sessions a week at minimum. Now, developing the right strength training mindset, okay? So a lot of people get started with strength training and they have unrealistic expectations getting started. And I like to use the analogy with golf. Golf is one of the most difficult sports that you could try to learn how to play. If you were to go take lessons right now, and it, let's imagine that you never played golf before or you just very rarely play, which is pretty much the same as never playing golf, your expectations after a month of golf lessons would not be to start signing up for amateur tournaments to try to win the tournaments, right? You would be probably more than happy if you're just able to keep the ball on the course. You're not even probably concerned about what you're scoring. If you're not losing golf balls, not hitting them in the water and just making good contact, those would probably be appropriate expectations when it comes to golf. But then when it comes to fitness, we think that after years of, of being inactive, that in one month, we're just going to start to see just drastic results within just a 30-day period or even a 90-day period. It's just not realistic. And the reason for this, just like golf, when you get first get started with golf, you're not very good at it. Strength training is a skill. Learning all these different movements are skills. And in the beginning, you're just not going to be very good at them. And it would not be smart, first getting started with strength training, to lift really heavy weights that are required to get the changes that we need to have happen. That, that would be a risky thing to do and you odds are would get hurt if you tried to do that or get sick and just not have a whole lot of fun with the strength training. So we have to start with the right mindset, thinking that the first several weeks, it is a win if you show up two to three times a week for the first several weeks. Most people underestimate how hard it is to create a new habit. So just showing up two to three times a week for the first several weeks is a huge, huge win. And in terms of the intensity level that you should be working at within those first several weeks, you should be thinking being in the 50 to 70% intensity level. Another way to think about that is literally just going through the motions, trying to learn how to get comfortable with the form of all the different exercises that you're being taught, trying to get comfortable in the gym, navigating around the space, and all the while slowly building your cardiovascular fitness, right? Which is another important piece of this puzzle, okay? This takes time, all right? Some important things here is after se several weeks of consistency in the gym, two to three days a week, over that time, you should be building some confidence with the different exercises that you're doing. And ultimately, you need to be at a point where you are comfortable getting uncomfortable making the exercises more difficult, okay? Making them more difficult typically means adding some weight or increasing the weight that you're using for your given exercise so that by the end of your set, let's say you're doing 10 reps of a certain exercise, let's say 10 reps of dumbbell bench press. By the time you get to reps eight, nine, and 10, those last couple reps, you should feel as though it is a 80 to 90% difficulty level 
And another way to think about it is you could maybe only do one or two more reps with good form at the end there. If you are staying in the 50 to 70% intensity level for too long, you are not going to give your body the stimulus that it needs that is required to get the proper adaptation to the strength training, okay? So again, this takes time, all right? The, the interesting thing here is that it's different for each person, okay? It can take anywhere from one to six months to go through this process in terms of slowly increasing the intensity level. This, be, this depends on a number of things your fitness level as you get started, your mobility, if you've have any, had any past injuries, your training frequency, right? So if you're coming in two to three or four days a week, the more frequent you're exercising, odds are the sooner you're going to start to be able to increase the intensity and then also your athleticism. Some people learn movements very quickly and are able to pick them up faster and some people need a little bit more practice and that's okay. But all these factors play play a key role here in making this decision to increase intensity. Again, we have our three C's. Consistency, first, get confident with the exercises. Then after several weeks or maybe even months of doing those two things, getting comfortable with the fact that you're going to be very uncomfortable increasing the weight so that you can get to that 80 to 90% difficulty range It is a very hard thing to do. Remember, as I said earlier, hard work is one of the things that hold people back from getting the results and getting to that 80 to 90% difficulty range consistently is very hard work and it is uncomfortable, okay? And that's one of the big reasons why people don't see the response that they want from their strength training. All right, so moving on, the second requirement here to get results is you do need to do cardio. Our recommendations is 20 to 30 minutes per day, five times a week at minimum, right? We we all don't move enough. And I'm going to illustrate for you here why this is so powerful and important. All right. Think cardio, low intensity, just going for a walk, bike riding, elliptical, anything very low intensity. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just think easy, simple movement, 20 to 30 minutes a day. There are a ton of benefits of cardio here. Obviously, heart health, weight management, lung capacity, your blood pressure, mental health. If you're ever just in an off mood or not feeling good, honestly, just going for a 20 to 30 minute walk can completely change the course of your day. Uh, you'll get better sleep. Uh, your immune function is better. You'll, your, your cognitive fun- function increases or improves. Uh, and it also reduces your risk of, of diseases, right? Really important there, obviously. And so there are a ton of benefits of cardio. So it's something that should be a part of your routine. And this extra movement adds up. You might be thinking that 20 to 30 minutes of movement, what kind of difference is that going to make? Well, let's imagine that you just burned 100 calories anytime you do this. You go for a walk or bike ride or whatever it is. And that's guessing on the low end, okay? 100 calories here. Do that five times a week, it's 500 calories a week. That's over 2,000 calories a month, okay? And it comes out to 26,000 calories per year, right? You can see how this adds up. But even just that 500 calories a week, in order to lose weight, you need to end up being in a caloric deficit by the end of the week, right? So meaning that your movement, the amount of calories that you burn should be more than the amount of calories that you're taking in without knowing your basal metabolic rate, most people have no idea how small of a window of margin per, margin of error that you have here. The 500 calories per week could mean the difference between you losing weight and gaining weight. It is really that small of a margin. So this little extra movement really is important. It definitely adds up over the course of time. Okay, so that's it. So again, we've got strength training is our first requirement. Second requirement is cardio. Now we're on to the third requirement, nutrition. The the bottom line is this. You can be doing the most effective strength workouts, working to 90% consistently three times a week, getting your cardio in five days a week. But if your nutrition is off, you simply cannot out-train a poor diet. It's just 
the unfortunate truth. It's the reality. The The training can become the fun part. It, it can become something that you enjoy because of the endorphin release and how good you feel immediately after your workouts and exercise. That is the easy part of this equation that oftentimes the most challenging part of this whole deal is getting the nutrition under control. So tracking your macronutrients, meaning your carbs, fat, and protein is quite arguably the most effective way to start seeing the fastest results possible. Okay. So let's get into this a little bit. Carbs are not evil. Okay. Most people, they, they, you know, you'll hear of all the fat diets, Oh, I need to cut carbs and, and this and that and the other. Carbs are not evil. You don't need to cut carbs. You just need good quality carbs. They're required for energy. So get your fruits and vegetables in as well as whole grains. Okay, so uh, carbs are not evil. M protein, most people don't come close to getting the amount of protein that is needed. All right, so protein is the hardest macronutrient for your body to break down. So just by digesting protein, your metabolism is going to go up, okay? Meaning you, you're burning calories just by digesting protein, okay? It helps you with muscle growth and repair, which is ultimately how we get the results from our training. We, we don't get the results from training while we're in the gym. You're actually causing a lot of problems, breaking things down when you're in the gym. Uh, you're, you're causing little micro tears in your muscles, right? And when you go home and sleep and put good food in your body, that's when the adaptation, the changes happen from the training. Okay, so getting enough protein is really, really important here. Okay, another key about protein is that it helps control your blood sugar. Okay, so it's really important if you're having a good source of carbs, especially in the morning for breakfast. Most people typically will have oatmeal or cereal or something like that without any protein and it causes a lot of issues for their blood sugar to, to spike up and this is why you get that mid-afternoon crash uh, because of that blood sugar spike and you haven't had any protein protein can help regulate that so that those spikes aren't as drastic okay so protein very very important and then fat uh, fat is great for your heart, your brain, hormone regulation, your skin, but also weight management because when you get good quality fat in your diet, it's going to help you stay full, right? The, the most common issue that we have with people with fat is that this one can get out of control really quick if you're not tracking your macronutrients, okay? Meaning you can have way too many grams of fat per day, which can really make the, the number of calories that you're having per day climb in a hurry, okay? So, Again, this is why tracking your macronutrients is very, very important. All right, so now let's put it, put all this together here. We've got strength training is, is step one as your foundation. Okay, we need to start the foundation of strength training two to three days a week. And the reason why you need to get started with strength training now is because it takes time to get good at it and it takes time to build muscle. And remember, muscle is your fat-burning battery that works for you 24-7, okay? So that's why muscle is so important. Cardio is the second piece. We need five days a week where you're doing low-intensity cardio for 20 to 30 minutes a day. Those calories add up, okay? Not only is it good for you physically with the calorie burn, but mentally as well. Uh, you'll start to feel better throughout the day the more consistent you walk, okay? And then nutrition, you have to track your macronutrients to get an idea of where you're at if you really want these changes to happen, okay? Now, the best way to figure out your, your exact nutrition profile is to actually work with a nutritional professional, right? So we need to figure out what exactly your basal metabolic rate is. There's a lot of um, personal health history that, that goes into this to figure out okay, how many of each macronutrient should you really be having? But if you're going to do this on your own, generally a good place to start would be 30% of your uh, intake of food would be protein, 35% is carbs, and 35% is fat. Like I said, this is just a recommendation and is typically just a good place to get started because usually most people don't have nearly enough protein and are getting way too many fat and carbs in their diet, okay? So again, I hope this was helpful for you. These are the three things that are required in order to get results. 
The key, as I said in the beginning, is to develop the right mindset going in because these are things that take time and commitment. Okay, so if you have a means to an end mindset as you're getting started with your fitness journey, you're only setting yourself up for failure because this takes consistent work and effort. Okay, so if you ever need any help with this, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We would love to help you. Uh, otherwise, hopefully you have a great day and hopefully we will see you in the gym soon. Thanks, guys.